Hi friends, my name is Mehir Mehta and today we'll learn about working of autosynchronous motors. You can see the circuit diagram of autosynchronous motors. We'll require a three-phase power factor meter to measure the power factor of the machine. We'll also require a panel which has the terminals of autosynchronous motors here, as you can see, on the left hand side, the F and FF are the field terminals of the autosynchronous motors and the RYB terminals are the stator terminals of the autosynchronous motors. The autosynchronous motor is coupled with a DC machine which is here a DC shunt generator where FFF are the field winding of the shunt generator, AAA are the armature windings of the shunt generator and the load terminals are also provided. This is the combined panel for autosynchronous motors coupled with DC shunt generators which I am going to use in this particular video. You will also use a single phase AC variac which supplies the variable AC voltage. This is my rectifier board which converts my AC supply to DC supply. This is the lamp load which I am going to use as my electrical load. Now if we talk about the field connections, I have a DPDT switch. Initially if you see the field winding FFF is connected to the points 0 0 via a ammeter. Initially, the switch is connected at 1 1, so that means 0 is connected to 1 and on the other pole 0 is connected to 1. And if you see, the points 1 1 are short circuited. Now, if you see, a variable AC voltage is supplying the AC voltage to the bridge rectifier and accordingly the DC voltage is obtained which is provided to the terminals 2-2 of my panel. This is how I would connect my power factor meter. The connections of power factor meter are similar to three phase watt meter. Now these are the ratings of my DC machine as well as the ratings of my AC machine. If you see the excitation current of the AC machine is 2 amperes. I would require to keep this current in mind while exciting the AC machine. The connections of DC shunt machine is such that my field winding FFF is in parallel with the armature winding AAA and it is parallel to the load which is connected to it. And this is how I complete the entire connection of my panel. Now before starting the machine I am providing a voltage of around 50 to 60 volts to the field winding of my AC machines and this DC voltage will be delivered to the field winding only when the DPDT switch makes its contact with the terminals 2-2 that means the switch is in the run position.
now here there is a mcb a dol starter which is required a mcb is required as a protective measure for the entire panel the dol starter which is an ac starter which is used for the auto synchronous motors and the plug point that you can see at the bottom part is used to supply the single phase variac initially as you can see the dpdt switch is connected to the terminals 1 1 which are short circuited this is this position of the dtdt switch is known as start position after it has reached its rated speed you turn the switch in the bottom part which is called as its run position as you can see when a dc excitation is provided to the field windings the dc field current which is which is around 1.2 amperes the stator current is 0. 37 amperes and the power factor is 0.8 lagging now if i want to increase the power factor what i need to do is i need to increase my excitation so here what we can see is by increasing the excitation current which has which was initially below 1.2 amperes now it has just rose over 1.2 amperes now initially the current the field current which was below 1.2 amperes has just passed 1.2 amperes and you can see the stator current has also increased to 0.56 Now the increase in the field excitation has raised my power factor from 0.8 lagging to 1. Till now I had not started my load. Now I have started my electrical load. Now the effect of electrical load, what you can see is. that if i start my electrical load the there is a very slight variation in the field current but if you look at the armature current of or the say stator current of the auto synchronous motor it has raised drastically and the power factor has moved towards leading side now whenever we ask students that will the power factor lead or lag most of the students say that the power factor lags basically the power factor depends on the type of the load your the load used is a resistive load so if the load used is resistive why is the needle moving towards the leading end the answer to this is if you remember the vector diagram of current and voltage on the axis of working current and the magnetizing current my load current has increased and my field excitation remained has has been constant so i can say is my working current has increased and the excitation current remains as it is hence the vector moves into leading part and my overall power factor becomes leading now again to match the power factor to unity i need to decrease my field current a bit so that 
my power factor again come back to unity so with the load on my stator current is 1.91 my field current is 1.2 and my power factor is unity now taking the readings at 0.9 leading i need to further increase the excitation keeping the load constant initially what we had did was we had varied the load and kept the excitation constant here we are keeping the load constant and varying the excitation so now my field current has moved way beyond 1.2 my power factor is 0.9 leading and the stator current of my auto synchronous motor is 2.47 amperes similarly for 0.9 lagging for the same load if i vary the power factor i need to also vary my field current so if you see the field current has gone way below 1.2 and my stator current is 1.83 so that's all for today thank you for being a patient audience and we look for your feedback in the comment sections below